interrupt this program. This is breaking news. Breaking news on WEEI is presented by BetQL. Smarter bets start with BetQL. Download the BetQL app or visit BetQL.com today. All right, here's your breaking news rap sheet, I believe, with the uh, first announcement of the Patriots signing former Commanders running back Antonio Gibson. The first signing of the day since legal tampering has begun for the Patriots. Antonio Gibson coming to Foxborough. Okay, I got to be honest, I don't hate it. I just, this is not how I expected free agency to start for the New England Patriots. A lot of running backs to the point where I'm I'm skeptical about the league and why so many running backs are signing so quickly. Collusion. Yeah, I have a theory on that. We can get to it. But Antonio Gibson, to me, and Mego, you you know him better than I do as a Commanders fan. He, he's a good compliment to Ramondre Stevenson. Think of him as a pass game player. He's not he's not going to line up between the tackles and run. He's had a thousand yard season as a running back in the past. This is a pass game player. Forty two receptions, forty six receptions, forty eight receptions the last three years. That's how to think about him. I think they needed a guy in the passing game, so I'm okay with it. What are you giggling at back there, Ryan? I just saw the Kirk Cousins money. Okay. Uh, four years, $180 million deal, $100 million guaranteed. Wow. Okay. So not fully guaranteed, but wow, that is a lot of money. $25 million a year at least for Kirk Cousins and 180 total. Put that to the side. Your reaction to Antonio Gibson. Okay, so as a Commanders fan, I always like Gibson a lot. I think you're right the way that you're talking about it. He's going to be a complimentary piece to Ramondre Stevenson. That's still going to be uh, your main back. But he is good at, you know, getting out there, uh, dependable hands. And guess what? He's mostly played with quarterbacks who kind of suck. So he probably won't be a pain in the ass here. So I think it's probably a good fit. Uh, let's take a real quick look. How did he do against the Pats last year? Uh, Gibson had five catches for 42 yards in that game. He had another 34 on the ground. So, you know, he's change of pace, third down back, pass game player. Third down back is kind of an antiquated term. Uh, but I think that's how you you look at him. And I think the Patriots needed that. Not how I expected to start free agency, but the Patriots are on the board, which I will take. It's better than nothing. Because so far, it had basically been nothing bringing everybody back. Uh, I would have rather had Saquon Barkley, I think. Yeah, fair. So Barkley is now with the Eagles. Uh, He signed right before Gibson did. Barkley's with the Eagles for a good amount of money. Let me get the uh, guarantees for you here. Three years, 37.5 can get up to 46.75. Okay. And that's on the heels of Pollard and Jacobs and DeAndre Swift. And maybe I'm missing another one or two. So all the NFC East running backs are just switching teams, finding new homes. Getting passed around. Uh, so Derrick Henry's still got a sign. Uh, Austin Eckler, if you believe he still has anything left in the tank, is still got a sign. Devin Singletary is another back who I would have preferred over Antonio Gibson, but we're nitpicking. Um, I have a theory on running backs. They're all signing on day one because owners were accused of collusion last year, colluding against running backs. So this is like a make good from the owners? Yeah, it's just they don't want to get sued, Mego. The, the owners don't want to get sued. They don't want to lose um, any exemptions that they have. Uh, when it comes to collective bargaining and everything else. And so, yeah, look, let's throw some small money at running backs. It's small money. And last year they sat out. Last year they went too far. So, yeah, it's effectively a make good. And there's some good names out there in free agency. Even even Saquon's not breaking the bank. So this is targeted by the league. They're all out there paying running backs on day one when nobody paid a running back last year. It feels planned. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, Barkley's uh, – so the franchise tag for running backs was like $12 million. Uh, Barkley, we just said, was three years, 37. So that's like, you know, just under 13. And it can get up to 46, which would be just over 15. And I don't know what those incentives are. But, you know, $15 million is – that's considerably more. That's $3 million more than the franchise tag, so that's that's something. I think Derrick Henry probably gets something like that, too. Yeah, but my point is it's not $100 million guaranteed for Kirk right. Cousins or the Christian Watkins. To even some of these guards are getting more than these running backs. So that's my point. You're not breaking the bank. Uh, but Antonio Gibson, first Patriots free agent signing from outside the organization. Uh, your thoughts, 617-779-7937. Paul in Rhode Island wants to weigh in on those who the Patriots have kept, including Kendrick Bourne and Hunter Henry. Go ahead, Paul. Thank you for taking my calls. Uh, listen, we that's we have to set a platform to take care of the in-house guys. Here's a perfect move right here with the Washington guy. Now, you have to understand, how do you get brand players to come here when the guys have been here? You pay them. And say, oh, wow, they do pay. That's how you're going to do it, even if you get Jacoby and, and a third-round pick as quarterback or drop down and get Milton or get whatever. But you must, you must pay the in-house guys because brand players won't come here. Yeah, so I don't I don't think one has to do with the other. You got to pay your own guy, you just just overpay. Do you think that if you went to Calvin Ridley, he'd go, "Well, you know what? 
You didn't pay Hunter Henry. No. So I'm not going there. No. In fact, if anything, it hurts you because it's less money to go right. throw at the good players. I, the Patriots have plenty of money to spend. So I'm not going to cry about $6 million a year for Kendrick Bourne or $9 million a year for Hunter Henry or whatever. I just wanted to move on from last year's team. It's not that those guys stink. It's just I'm done with them. I saw them. I saw what the team was. I'm done with it. It's the same way I was done with Mac. There's no reason to bring him back. He was cheap. You could have kept him as a depth quarterback. I think he was problematic. You have a craving for a clean slate. Yeah. Turn the, you should. They won four games. <laughs> so, like, move on from everyone. I, I wanted to completely cleanse the organization. And they brought they moved on from Bill. They're bringing back a few of these guys. But to answer your question, Mego, no, I don't think that has anything to do with Calvin Ridley and whether he'd sign here. If they throw enough money at him, he'll sign here. If they don't, he won't. It probably goes without saying, but this does mean that Zeke's probably gone, right? Like, he's not coming back at all. Probably. That's a downgrade, isn't it? To Gibson? From Zeke to Gibson, I'd say it is. maybe, but isn't he a better fit? Aren't they a better combination? Like, Zeke and Ramondre felt somewhat redundant. I guess. Elliot Elliot was better than than Stevenson last year, though. I think Gibson will be, like, more like a James White-ish guy, though. Yeah, he's a passing game. I mean, he's just, he's a weapon in the passing game. Which, Zeke could catch some passes, but they were, like, dump-offs. This guy can run routes. This guy can run routes down the field, wheel routes and things like he, he, So he was, I, if I'm not mistaken, he was a receiver in college. Can somebody check me on that? I think Antonio Gibson was a receiver at Memphis. So this is a real pass game player. Zeke would catch passes. Ramondre Stevenson can catch passes. To Mego's point, this is like an actual real weapon in the passing game. I don't want to overrate what he is. I it's mean, a small he, weapon. He's a second, third tier <laughs> free agent signing, and he's not what I expected, but I think he's a useful player, and I would rather have him than Zeke. If we're talking about Zeke versus Gibson that I think he's a, a, a weapon in the past. The year. only thing I would say is that you do know that Zeke can function here. Yeah, true. Like, you saw it last year. I think Zeke outperformed most of our expectations last year. And so he did have that going for him. Could he replicate it? I don't know. And I do think there was some redundancy, like you said. Yeah, so I, I don't want to overstate what Gibson is. Yes, Arkan? Uh He was a wide receiver yeah. at Memphis. And I agree. I mean, listen, it, that is something, an element of the offense that we talked about last year that they didn't have and was a, a thing that they really needed. I think Mac Jones would have helped him. But I also don't think you're really improving anywhere. Like, you're not upgrading anything. Well, it's the first, at least minor upgrade, because bringing back Henry, you definitely didn't improve. You already had him. Right. And bringing back Kendrick Bourne, you definitely didn't improve. You already had him. So I'm okay with it. It. Not what I expected to be number one. They better do more, but I don't mind the Gibson move. I'm the guy who gets accused of hating everything. I'm okay with this move. Uh, 617-779-7937. We got all your feedback. What do you want the Patriots to do in free agency? How do you feel about what they've done so far? Mostly bringing back everyone outside of Antonio Gibson. We still don't know on on when you what's going on there. Uh, other news in free agency. The quarterback musical chairs continue to go round and round. Mac Jones is now in Jacksonville. Should the Patriots get in on Justin Fields, who's maybe getting boxed out? On a landing spot, we can do all that with your phone calls.